Hi all. I hope everyone's doing okay and not stressing out too much about the upcoming AP uh, exams in a little over a week at this point. Um, I wanted to talk about some tips about answer submissions, like how I would recommend doing the answer submission. So if you haven't seen, they have an interactive demo of what a submission of the um, of the exam on test day is going to look like. And I really suggest you go through and make sure you follow like everything you're supposed to do. They have a video explaining it, but they actually have an interactive demo that you can try it out and like kind of see how it is to submit answers and things like that. Okay, so um, I'll put it in the link in the description below, but go to that, try the demo, make sure you're very familiar with it uh, prior to your first AP exam. Okay, so Ultimately, it comes down to there's two ways you can submit answers. You can either type them up or you can um, submit a file or um, you can um, take a photograph of um, your writing and answers and submit that. Um, the, the typing out one is just, it, that's more for essays and doing text. I honestly do not, ex I, I, I expect you to have to do some showing your work in calculations for statistics, physics, and um, calculus. So I don't suggest you go that route at all. The file submission is okay if you wanna mix typing and stuff, but I actually find, I, I am, I'm not gonna recommend that one. I actually do recommend you do the photograph. I really do recommend that you do this by um, uh, handwritten uh, answers, writing it on pieces of paper, taking a photograph and submitting that as your final answer. There's a couple of reasons I, I like this. Um, one, it is more natural to the way that you have been solving problems at this point. You, there's not a lot of, there's, unless you're very, very comfortable with equation editors and typing stuff in, it's really hard to get everything like typed in correctly just using uh, normal ASCII keys. So um, I, I, I like the, the, the feeling of handwriting. I would prefer to handwrite everything um, myself, okay? Um, the other thing is you might need to draw some pictures. I don't think you'll need to draw any extensive amounts of pictures, um, but it's possible. And I think the flexibility of uh, handwriting it on paper is is too valuable to ignore. I, th I think you should really try uh, to go the handwritten approach and taking pictures. So I wanted, and you might think, okay, that's fine. That's that's pretty easy. But I, I want you to think, take care and think of a few major points that you want to consider when you're doing this. First, you're probably going to pull this thing up on your computer right and and that's probably what i would recommend you pull it, the question up on the computer so you can read it well you don't want to be reading on your phone that's like way too tiny so it's on your computer and then you're going to take a fit picture probably with your phone of your work so you want an easy way to transfer photos from your camera to your computer okay i like google photos that's what I use to back up all of my photos. So once I take a picture, it just you know it, it quickly syncs to Google Photos as backup. Um, if you're on an iPhone, um, um, I, I believe the there's there's automatic automated backup systems. But in case you are you know like those are, those options aren't available to you or you don't use either of those, you could consider emailing yourself the picture. You could consider um, texting yourself the picture. Texting can degrade the quality of the image, so I actually wouldn't necessarily. I'm not a huge proponent of doing that one, but um, um f find whatever mechanism to transfer the photo from your phone to your computer um, that you find easiest. And make sure you know how to do that process because you don't wanna spend your spend your time dinking around with like the, the, the image and stuff like that uh, on your phone. So make sure you have a good way to transfer the image from where you're taking it on your phone to your computer or wherever you're gonna be submitting the, um, the, the answer to your question. That's the first thing. The second is you wanna be careful the kind of paper and the medium you use for this. And it's gonna surprise you, but uh, I actually do all of my work, if I'm doing it on um, handwritten, I do everything with pen, okay? Pen is easier to read, it's clearer, it shows up better than pencil. I'm kinda of gonna show you some pictures that I took um, of things I've taken. Now both of these look pretty good. Um, I tried pencil, I tried blue pen, I tried black pen. I also showed you the difference between ruled paper and plain paper. I'm actually generally gonna recommend, like they all seem okay readable, but you can tell like in general that the pencil is a little bit lighter. And th the thing about pencil is 
why why do people like pencils like well i can erase but if you, i don't know if you've done that but if you erase too many times try to erase too much of the paper like it just looks like a jumbled mess i actually recommend that you just cross if you if you make a mistake when you're typing something i recommend you simply cross it out and continue don't bother sitting there with your eraser trying to deal with it. Just cross it out and then move on. So say I was like saying like, oh, it's one half mt squared. And I, oh wait, nope. Don't bother erasing it. Don't sit there with eraser and just type one half mv squared. Okay. And, and this way, you see, it's very clear that I've, I've canceled that part, right? Like the X is very bold. It's very clear to ignore that portion of the, of the, of the, of my answer. So I actually don't recommend using a pencil. There's no real strong advantage to using a pencil, in my opinion. I actually do everything with pen because when you erase, you can't get it 100% erased clearly, you know. And then and then you kind of have to like be like, well, and then like if you erase too many times, you know, it's really hard to read. And readability is important because there's a difference between you physically having the paper with the eraser marks and you taking a picture of that work. Okay, it may not translate super well. Okay. The other thing I wanted to show on here was that I think black pen on um, a solid like a uh, paper that you you know you'd use for a printer is better than ruled paper. The ruled paper it turned out it looked okay. I think it looks a little crisper and cleaner on a, a blank piece of paper and not worried about the ruled lines because readability is super important for the graders. You want it to be cr like super easy for them to read and grade your response. If it if it's if it's difficult, if the the, the ruled lines get in the way, which I I don't think is, is necessary, it, it sort of detracts from your work and makes it more painful for it to read. And you just want to make it as easy as possible for the grader to read your work. Okay, so that's why I recommend black ink, solid paper if you can get it. If you can't, ruled paper is fine, but I still recommend the black, black or blue pen. The blue pen looked pretty good too, but I recommend a black pen um, on paper. I also make sure your lighting is pretty good when you're taking it. Um, you can rely on your, I, I honestly would run a couple of tests on what you're gonna, like what the lighting's gonna look like when you take it, how your overhead lighting is. I have pretty good lighting in general because I, I need to have good lighting. That's how it shows up kind of clear for my face and everything like that in the office. But in general, you be, be cognizant of the fact that you want pretty good lighting when you're taking the picture. So do a few test runs and some pictures, maybe some old notes, take some pictures, see how they look. I, I, I've seen lots and lots of uh, students send me work and like they're, they're sometimes they're not straight on um, they're at an angle when they're taking the pictures it's folded over it's like don't sit in your lap like you want to be directly over the piece of paper straight on and nice and even and flat almost, almost like you're scanning an image okay so um i think that's everything i want to really talk about on the submission so just to cap it off have an easy way of transferring photos from your phone to your computer to where you're going to be doing the submission. Um, um, black ink, definitely recommend um, over any, you might feel weird doing math or physics on pen, uh, but I, I think it's way better. I think you don't, you don't, you don't waste your time erasing. And then, um, yeah, black pen on blank pieces of paper. And then good lighting when you're taking the picture make sure that it's nice and crisp you know like with this time constraint it's really really going to be important that you're not dinking with you know technology and everything like that so maybe have some backup options um have a backup phone or someone else's phone to take a picture backups are going to be super important in this scenario have your computer plugged in fully charged ready to go don't be on battery power all right you don't want the battery to run out on you accidentally during the middle of your submission um you know keep a lot of redundancy in checks and then you know just go through a practice run go through the online demo take a picture of something have it on your computer submit the answer the, it'll accept the submission on the online demo uh, for you know how, how the, the 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 questions and the answers will work, you can you can give it a shot. Go through that process and see if um, everything seems to run smoothly. And then think a little bit about backups and other phones, or you know taking think about the the, the pictures out, or if you need another computer, maybe. Um, yeah. So those are my major tips for that one. Um, let me know if you have any other questions about it. But um, yeah. Um, good luck. <laughs>